Okay, welcome back. Uh, we were we got paused in the middle of this question, and so the very first thing we did is we figured out what h of negative two is, which we know is also going to be our y value, and we know this one over here is actually going to be our m. So h prime of negative two is going to be equal to that three carries down and f prime of x. Now. You have to evaluate. Am I allowed to evaluate this just the way it is because we are doing a derivative? Can I just distribute it? Well, since it's 3 times f of x, we can consider that the constant multiple. We can go ahead and do it the way it is. But if it had said f of x times g of x is equal to h of x, well, guess what? That's what we call a product rule. F something times something, that's a product rule. It's not just a constant out front. It's not just a coefficient. So if I've got that product rule, then I have to do the product rule for derivatives. So just something to be aware of. Make sure you double check this information. But we're not quite there yet. So we're going to just have a constant multiple and f prime. So we know that f prime of negative 2, sorry, this should have been a negative 2, not an x. f prime of negative 2 is negative 5. So 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. And that's my m. So if I come up here and I write my x is, where is it, negative 2. My y we calculated was 9 my m is going to be negative 15. Therefore, my n sub n is going to be negative negative. So that's going to be a positive 1 15th. So if we take a second to write that down, let me get all this out of the way. To write down our lines, we're going to write a tangent. We're going to write a normal line. If we take that second. So here's my tangent line. That becomes y minus 9 is equal to negative 15. There's my m times x minus x1. So x minus negative 2 is the same as x plus 2. For my normal line, I'm going to write the same one, but I'm going to change that m. So y minus 9 is equal to 1 15th times x plus 2. Got two more examples, and that's it. We're done. Okay, so here we have another one, and in this one we weren't given a table or any information, but we were given that original function all the way across. We were given our original x and our original y, so I'm going to go ahead and make my little table. And, ooh, they're not even asking for the equation anymore. We'll stop and read our question, right? They're asking us to simply find the slopes. So once I have this little box filled out, we're technically done. So... Let me get all that out of our way, and let's go ahead and get started. We know that this is 9. We know that this is negative 6. Well, where's the only place I can find m, my slope? My slope is my derivative, so the only place I can find it is in f prime. So I go ahead and start with f prime, and that's going to be uh, that constant multiple stays on the outside. This is really, if we pause, we know that that's actually x to the 1 half. So I bring that 1 half down, and my take subtract 1 from my uh, exponent, so that's negative 1 half minus 2, and if I simplify that down, that becomes, this just turns into a 2 over the square root of x minus 2. So now I'm going to plug it in. So this is f prime of x. Well, I want to know what f prime of, what's my x value? 9. 9 is. So that becomes 2 over the square root of 9 minus 2. Square root of 9 is technically plus or minus 3, but we're going to go ahead and use the positive value, 2 thirds minus 2. And so 2 thirds minus 2 is the same as saying 2 thirds minus 6 thirds. So that's going to be the same as saying negative 4 thirds. So my slope is negative 4 thirds. Therefore, my uh, my slope of the normal line has to be the reciprocal, so 3 fourths, and technically a negative, but a negative times a negative makes it positive. So here would have been our two answers all the way up here. And I think this is my final example. So we have this huge word problem and this graph, and this is a key example on kind of how they do this on the AP test. I'm going to tell you right now, there's way too much information in this question. So I'm going to go ahead and say, Ooh, ignore all the beginning and go straight to the end. What am I looking for? Well, I'm looking to write an equation for the line tangent to the graph of f at x equals 1 half. Well, just starting there, not looking at anything before, I can already go ahead and say I know I need x, y, and at least m. And I know my x is 1 half, and that's as far as I got. But I know that this is going to be f of 1 half because we're looking at f, right? Okay, f of 1 half, and this is going to be f prime of 1 half. But now we have information about g, and we have information about f. The main reason we have information about that is to figure out which of these lines is the line I'm looking at, okay? Uh, but does it really, truly matter about the line I'm actually looking at if we're talking about at 1 half? Well, no, not really, because we have an intersection point. So the reality of it is, is technically this first whole little bit 
isn't a hundred percent necessary. Yeah, it's it's important information. It's important to know that we're in quadrant one because we have all positive values. It's important to recognize that this upper line is actually our g of x, and this lower line is our uh, 8x cubed. So this lower line is our f. Okay, so all I really have to do is take my f of x and figure out its prime, f prime of x, and what that derivative is. But if I take a moment, I just recognize something on my own graph. I could plug in one half right here and get it back. But look at your graph. What did they provide for you magically in that image? They gave you your y value. So they already did one part. All you have to do is figure out the slope. So this becomes 8 times 3, so 24x squared. And we plug in, what was it, 1 half? And that becomes 24 times 1 half squared. Well, 1 half squared is the same as saying 1 half times another one half if I multiply across that becomes one fourth so that's really 24 over 4 which is uh, 6 so my f prime is actually 6 so my slope is also 6 so now I can take a moment and I can write my full equation I'm gonna erase all this craziness that I did okay so my tangent line would be y minus my y value 1 is equal to 6 times uh, x minus one half and there's our equation and that's all we did today so just as a wrap up just to kind of see exactly what we did as a wrap up i brought that first slide back again you really need information about f of x and f prime or enough information about either of those to find the other whether it's in a table form whether you have the uh, original equation and you can find the derivative or when we hit second semester if you have the uh, derivative and you can work backwards to get to that integral whether whatever you have as long as you have information enough about both in order to identify three key things x y and m and just remember x can be found in anything f or f prime but the only things that can be found in the function is y and the only thing that can be found in the uh derivative is or sorry the only thing that can be found in the derivative yeah is slope so if i wrote out what i mean i could write we have f of x and we have f prime of x and in f of x i can solve for x and i can solve for y in f prime of x i can solve for x and I can solve for slope. That's all I'm trying to say. So if you're looking for y, you have to be looking in the function. If you're looking for m, you have to be looking in f prime. And this was a major disconnect that I saw in the past is that, you know, you guys are trying to plug in your x into a function and get slope, and that's never going to happen. Or you're trying to plug into your x into the derivative and find y. And again, that's never going to happen because you're using two very different equations. And then, of course, a reminder, our normal slope is literally just take your original slope, flip it, and change the sign. That's it. And that's all we've got for tangent line equations. I will see you guys in class.